r slash credit. Parents of Reddit, what is the creepiest thing your kid has ever said or done? My niece and nephew were 13 and 15 at the time and we were watching them for my brother-in-law while he was out of town. At about 3am I get shaken and awake to two visibly upset teens who start sobbing about a dead woman trying to get in my niece's bedroom window. This jolts my husband out of bed in a hurry, he grabs his handgun and tells me to stay with the kids. They live in a mobile home that sits on risers, so this window is roughly 9 feet at its base. He goes down the hallway and I hear him shout, what the fuck, and run back to the front door and outside. Now the niece and nephew are losing their minds, not wanting their uncle getting hurt, so I call the cops and walk to the door to see what's going on. The dead woman was in fact a woman hopped out of her mind on who knows what, naked, and she did very much look like a corpse. She had been standing on the roof of my truck, trying to see in the windows. My 4 year old likes to play this make believe game where she is having a baby and needs it cut out of her, we have never explained to her what a c-section is. Then the baby always has some sort of deformity, like no eyes or arms or something, and she needs to try again to have a better baby and she is just going to throw the bad one out. My wife and I have refused to play this game with her once we noticed the pattern, but now she is drafting her younger sister into it and they love it. I'm torn between making them stop or just being happy they are playing so nicely together. Edit. After seeing some comments, I will add that my wife and I do not let our kids watch YouTube unattended. We have discussed this weird game with our daughter and do monitor it, but overall it just seems harmless despite its creepiness. My husband is a farmer. One night he asked me to pick him up after working ground, and it was pretty late, around 10 o'clock. So I loaded our two girls up then 4 and 2 and headed to the field. We get to the field and C is finishing up his last round, so we had to wait for a minute. I rolled the windows down in the van and shut the engine off. After a few minutes my two year old says, Mommy, who that man outside? I said, I don't see a man, is your Ken doll on the floor? My four year old then piped up, he's right outside your door and staring at you. He's scary. He has blood on his face. That's when I turned the key, rolled the windows up, locked the doors, and called my husband and told him to hurry the hell up because the girls are terrified and there's apparently a scary man outside my door that I can't see, but both girls are describing him and what he's doing. Thankfully C was done and heading up to the van at that moment and we left. My girls are now 5 and 7 and they both still remember that man and refuse to go to that particular field. I have to ask my mill to watch them when I need to pick their daddy up from there. Posted this before. My 4 year old son had a habit of announcing when he had to use the bathroom. He would say I gotta go potty. One time he makes his business known and heads off toward the bathroom. He returns seconds later and says there's already someone in the bathroom. Now I do know for a fact that it's just the two of us home, so the hair stands up on my neck. I ask him, what do you mean? He repeats, there's already someone in the bathroom. Now I'm thinking, is it someone I see dead people or someone in a hockey goalie mask? So I grab the biggest knife from my knife block and tell him to stay here. I walk to the bathroom, take a wide angle to see in, nobody. Slowly and quietly walk toward the shower and pull back the curtain. Nothing. By now my son has walked around the corner and I ask him where did you see the person? He points to an unflushed toilet and says see, someone's already here. His big brother didn't flush the toilet. Back in the mid 60s, my cousin's family lived out near the ocean on the coast of Japan. It wasn't so built up back then and they lived near a rocky cliff where a small lighthouse sat. My cousin was maybe 8 at the time, but he was sort of obsessed with turtles. He had a pet turtle with an odd name, and he took very good care of it, to the point where he didn't have much of a social life. It was a wild turtle he'd caught, and since he was missing out on socializing anyway, his parents eventually convinced him to let the turtle go. He let it go in a small pond nearby, but he'd go out to talk to it every day. Anyway, one day there was a big downburst coming up from the sea, it came out of nowhere, and was absolutely ferocious. 
My cousin was caught out in the open and ran to the lighthouse for protection. The storm passed in a few minutes, but the sea was so ferocious that the lighthouse crumbled under the waves. My cousin was found slightly dazed but unharmed, sitting a few hundred yards from the rubble. Anyway, my cousin doesn't remember this today, but his parents told me that he wouldn't shut up about how his turtle had turned giant, come out of the sea, and caught him before flying away. His English wasn't the best, but he just kept repeating the same thing. Gamera is friend to children. My son woke me up at about 2am, in fear. We live in a one story house, so his window is facing towards the street on a ground level. He told me there was a man outside looking back at him. I follow him back, and sure enough, our neighbor was looking into the window. I asked him what he was doing. He didn't answer. I called my husband to come, and when he got there, he walked away. The next day I asked my neighbor if he recalled the events of that night, and he said no. Probably sleepwalking. Scared the shit out of me. Edit. To clear things up. No cops were called he was probably sleepwalking. Probably no intent to hurt my husband did go over there and smack him. They moved out a few weeks later. Another edit. Again. Yes my husband smacked the dude decided not to press charges. So my husband said the reasonable thing to do was to teach him a lesson I had no idea what he was planning to do until my neighbor's wife called me up complaining what he did. I was the child. Some background info. Grew up in the country in the Midwest. We do tea lock our doors around here, at least not in the country. We had a wood burning stove so had a logging road in our backyard that lead into a meadow and then into woods where we would get our firewood. There is a surprising amount of local UFO stories in my particular corner of Wisconsin, but at the time this story takes place I didn't know what an alien was or any of the stories or anything. I was about 4. One night my mom woke up to the sound of our front door opening and closing. She grabs a knife and goes out to investigate. In the light of the yard light she sees bitty me walking barefoot out towards the logging road. She runs outside and grabs me and asks me what do I think I'm doing? Me, I have to go visit my friends. Mom, what? What friends? Me, my new friend, they told me to meet them in the meadow. I ended up explaining to my mom that my new friends can talk to me in my wad without being near me, that they don't wear clothes and they want to take me on a trip. There have been several cases of mutilated cattle over the years, and if you ask the right questions to the right people, loads of stories of lights in the sky and strange figures, and what have you. My grandpa refused to ever talk about the night. All I know is the cattle were mutilated, my grandma cried if you brought it up, and my grandpa would not let anyone talk about it in his presence. Since then, I have seen some pretty strange shit out at the farm. I do remember needing to meet my friends in the meadow. <laughs> Obligatory not a parent, but I feel like this is fitting. I had to babysit a herd of kids on the ranch I lived at. I think it's a herd. I mean, 7 kids is a lot. Their ages ranged from 7 to 12, so it was a treat as an 18 year old to try and keep a semblance of order. Thankfully half of them weren't allowed to watch TV normally, so I turned on Spongebob and let them zone out in watching it. By the by, that's creepy enough in its own right to me. Anyway, before I get to the creepy part one need to explain the layout of the house. It's very long house. If you were looking straight at its center, it had a fenced in courtyard with a huge living room bordering it. This living room had floor to ceiling glass okay both sides. So you could see through that a backyard which was a casually sloping grass lawn. On the left side was the kitchen, garage, a huge dining room, and a bathroom for the pool goers. Note, the living room and kitchen side of things are level with the ground. The bedrooms are all on the right side. There are four, with about seven beds between them, another bathroom, and all the windows are elevated. The windows basically start midway up the wall. There is also another restroom tucked in the hallway. There's no way to exit from the bedrooms, but if there were you would need stairs or a ramp as on that side the ground drops a good 5 to 6 foot minimum. Well, all the adults are out exploring the ranch. TBH I suspect the father of half the kids more wanted to go, have kinky forest fun times with his new GF, and I'm stuck with the herd. 
They all finally chill out, and I excuse myself to use the bathroom. I cruise through the kitchen, through the dining room, to the outside pool bathroom, do my thing, and come back to the living room the way I came. As I walk in, all the kids are fucking stoked. Like, they went from TV gremlins to just fucking amazed and excited. They are all standing near the entrance to the bedroom hallway, pointing out the window going I just saw him. They all have their backs to me, so I kind of startled them when I asked them what they saw. They whirled around, dumbstruck, and asked me how the heck I did that. They all swear they saw me, or rather they saw someone who looked like me and wearing a white shirt like me walk right by that bedroom window from the outside. I raised an eyebrow, then had to think about the following. We are alone on a huge ranch. The kids' families are wealthy as fuck. There is a potential of either a poacher, a drug grower, or a random person of questionable means having found this house. I tell the kids to lock themselves in the closest bedroom and not to come out until I say so. I pop open the gun locker and grab the closest shotgun. Ranch rules for the win. We use them for snakes that are in hard to get to places. And I dart out the front to cut off whoever the heck is walking around the house. Well, no one is there. Driveway is empty, no tracks in the dirt beyond car tracks. I can see far and wide thanks to freshly mowed fields. I walked back to the bedroom window to see if I could find anything hinting at someone having been there, and nothing. That's when it dawned on me, I'm standing under the very same window they saw someone walking in front of. I'm 5 ft 9 inches, and this window is easily 6 and a half feet off the ground. They claimed they saw my shirt and torso clearly, though the window, whatever they saw, had to have been tall as fuck. That's when my blood ran cold and proceeded to lock down the whole place, turn on movies for the kids, and nurse that gun until the parents came home. Naturally, the parents thought I was overreacting. But to be honest, in the middle of nowhere, I'm not taking any chances. Not a parent, but I was once babysitting my niece, who was around 3 at the time, and she needed a bath before bed. I noticed as she was splashing around and playing with her toys she kept looking just over my shoulder into the corner of the bathroom and giggling. I looked over my shoulder and of course nothing was there. As I turned back to her she had a completely blank look on her face, stared directly into my eyes and said don't be scared then started giggling uncontrollably. Safe to say I snatched her out of the bath real quick and got her ready for bed. About half an hour after leaving her in the bedroom I heard her laughing and talking. I went in to check if she was sleep talking, but she was sat upright, cross-legged in the middle of the bed, as if she was chatting to someone sat opposite her. I asked her what she was doing, and she said I'm talking to the man. What man? I asked to which she replied the ghost, Stephen. I tucked her back into bed and she drifted off pretty quickly. I never asked her about it the next day, but she's 6 now and doesn't remember a thing about it. I'm pretty sure I fell asleep with the light on that night. I don't know where she would have learned about ghosts at that age either, but mum said me and my sisters used to do it as kids too. About 8 years ago, my daughter, who was 5 at the time, woke up in the middle of the night, crying and yelling, almost screaming, around 3am. I went in, bleary eyed, and sat on the side of her bed. My daughter is an eloquent and linguistically advanced little thing, but she was pretty much reduced to a blubbering, quivering mass of terror. She was clearly horrified by something, and just put her head down on my leg and sobbed. She did so for several minutes, with me just patting her back and holding her. When she eventually calmed down, I asked her if she had a bad dream. She told me that she didn't think that she had been dreaming, but that there had been someone looking in her window, and it had really frightened her. I got a little spark of anger. We had had some teenagers messing around in our backyard a few times at night, and if they had worked up the balls to climb the wall and look in, that was bad. My daughter's window is about 9 feet off the ground, and it's a sheer brick wall leading up to it, but you can climb it with a bit of effort, a run and then a grab on the bottom of the window will get you started. I thought that I had frightened off this group of teenagers by stepping out on the back porch with a large gherkinite for a few weeks before, but apparently I had not. She went on, dispelling my assumption. 
Daddy, it wasn't those boys. He was just standing on the ground, looking in. As I mentioned, her window is 9 feet off the ground. And there was something wrong with his hands. His hands were really. She paused, looking for a word. Then she frowned and started crying again. Long, long and strange. She cried hard again for a second, then kind of stuttered out. His face was long and wrong too. I held up my hand and asked if the long hands were like mine. She said no and put her one hand on the base of my hand and the other about 3 or 4 inches from the tips of my fingers. This long, she said. But not as white. Daddy, I'm scared. So to recap, my daughter woke me up by screaming and crying, then informed that she saw fucking Slenderman in the backyard and that she was scared and he was strange and long. I was sleepy and had suddenly become convinced that there was a monster in the backyard. It's a lot easier to believe in things at 3am. So I did the hardest thing I've ever had to do as a dad. I smiled and said, kiddo, I think it was all a dream. I will look in the backyard though, okay. Internal voice, this is how horror movies start. Don't do it. She said, okay because there's nothing bigger or stronger than daddy. She actually managed to smile at me and laid back down in her bed, secure in the knowledge that everything was fine. I got out the same huge Gurkha knife and went to the kitchen, which has an exit onto the back porch. I turned on the back lights. In the backyard there was nothing. Nothing was there because it was all just a dream. She had a creepy, distressing dream and she has a gift with language and she made me think that it was real and it scared the bejesus out of me. I went back to her room and told her that everything was okay and that I would keep her safe. I held her until she slept and then I went back to bed. I lay awake, staring at the window until my other daughter woke up at 6 for the morning. Not a parent, but my cousin is, this was about last year. For an on sake I'll call him Dave. We were out on an all day fishing trip and told me that if I wanted to spend the night at his place, I was more than welcome to not seeing him in a while and still wanting to shoot the shit. I said sure. He lives in a rancher with his wife of 2 years and their 7 year old son. He's a good part older than me. When we got back to his place, we had dinner, watch TV, normal things with nothing eventful happening. Eventually his wife and son went to bed which left us alone in the living room. That's when I asked him, you liking this place so far? Mind you, the last time we saw each other, he was living in a different place at the time. He said yeah, but was making a face that you could tell he wanted to say more. He eventually followed up with, don't get me wrong. This place is great, but there's just something weird about it, I don't know what it is. Which I told him it's a new place and he probably hasn't gotten used to it quite yet. He agreed and we went back to watching some show, when we could faintly hear his son talking, we just look at each other and dismiss it thinking he was talking in his sleep or something. An hour goes by, and it's getting late, and Dave can still hear his son talking, so he decides to check on him as to why he's up. He enters his son's room with a hey buddy why are you this is followed up by him shuffling to pick up his son and carry him out slamming on the door and waking his wife and sending us all out of the house. I'm obviously freaked. Dave is freaked. His wife, Jen, is groggy and confused but their son is just poker face about the whole situation. No reaction. As soon as I know we are all out on the sidewalk in front of his house, when he asks me to call the police, I oblige, not even thinking if it was a prank, and wait. I ask him what happened man? Took him a while to gather a response, then he looked at me with the weirdest facial expression and said he was on his bed sitting up talking towards the closet. When I looked over to see what was in there, I saw an old man, and I swear to god man, he was smiling at me. He was tearing up as he was telling me this. Police arrive. They check the house. No sign of entry at all. Everything except the front door is locked. When everything was said and done, Dave made everyone sleep out in the living room at night. I went home, and four months after that night, they moved. I see him even more, since he ended up moving closer to me. I asked him if he moved because of the man he saw, and he'll just shrug it off. 
almost like he saw him again. Either way, something happened that night. Now his son plays Fortnite, so you decide what's creepier. My oldest daughter had night terrors every night near the same time for close to 3 years. Hands down the scariest thing ever. When it first started we had never hears of night terrors and had no idea what was happening. She would appear wide awake, eyes open, would walk around the house. Screaming and crying and trying to hide from things only she could see. If we talked to her or asked her questions she would respond, but it was always stuff, like there's shadows mommy. Don't let them get me. Don't let them get me. And start screaming and trying to hide. Sometimes she would suddenly look at us in absolute terror and start screaming and trying to get away. It was always around 1am and scary as anything. We eventually figured out that if we held her tightly and let her hide her face against us while we rocked her gently and just make calming shush noises, she would slowly calm down and then wake up for real. She was always surprised to be where she was, had no recollection of any of it, and just wanted to go back to bed. She'd then sleep through the rest of the night. It was super scary and horrible for us to watch and nothing we did ever helped. She eventually just outgrew it. She has no memory about any of it. The only reason she even knows she had night terrors was because we told her. I posted this here before, but it's honestly still the freakiest thing that's ever happened to me. I was vacationing at a big cabin in the mountains for a week for a family reunion. It was a girl scout cabin, so it was huge. My two year old niece was there. Fearless little thing. I'd seriously never seen her scared before. She was the kind of kid that would happily toddle into the forest after a bear if you let her. At the time she was just learning how to talk, so her sentences were one or two words. About 3 or 4 days into the stay, I was in the kitchen helping out with lunch when she came in. I gave her a snack and a drink and sent her out. Not a minute later I heard the most blood cuddling scream. It was horrible. I've never heard a sound quite like it since. It sounded like an animal caught in a trap, but it was human. It was my niece. I raced out into the hallway to see my niece running towards me, face contorted in horror. There were tears streaming down her face as she leaped into my arms and screamed. Run. Baby. Eyes. Eyes. Run. She was shaking like a leaf, but clawing my neck and and clothes trying to get me to run. At one point she pointed down the empty hallway, still screaming about eyes. There were no windows, just a locked door. A blank hallway. By then the rest of the family had come crowding around to see what was going on. I couldn't explain it and neither could she. Just baby. Eyes. Baby and then she'd melt down all over again. This happened two more times during our stay. Once I was holding her upstairs and tried to sit on a couch when she began to scream again, pointing at the couch and telling me to run. Her finger followed something down the hallway and into the empty bunk room. Another time she was running around playing with her cousins when I heard her screaming my name. I found her in the empty bunk room inconsolable. After that she kept trying to leave. Thankfully we were close to the end of our stay, but all doors needed to be locked to keep her from escaping. She wanted out of there. For a long time after that you could not mention the incident without her falling apart, crying about the ghost baby again. It became taboo to mention it around her. Eventually the family came up with their own explanation that she must have seen one of her cousins sleeping upstairs and gotten scared by the blanket moving. They treat it like a joke now. I was the only real witness all three times though and I can tell you that that is not what freaked her out. I'm not sure what it was but it wasn't another child. My now 11 year old daughter had an imaginary friend when she was 5. We were staying with my parents for the summer so the older kids could enjoy the country and spend time with family. Our second day visiting I hear my daughter talking to someone on the porch. I didn't think anything of it at first. I just assumed it was one of her older siblings. Then she came inside for some water and asked if she could bring some to her new friend, Elizabeth. I knew damn good and well that there were no other kids here. My parents live in the middle of four acres surrounded by woods and swampland around the back of the property. So, okay cool, my kid had an imaginary friend. 
No biggie, if only. Over the next few weeks we are slowly given details about Elizabeth. She has dark hair but some of it is orange looking, like it's dirty from Kool-Aid. She has a bloody and messed up leg, and she limps because she was run over. Not run over by a car cause it didn't have an engine. Elizabeth lives in the woods alone and doesn't sleep. She is darker than me, like she has a really good tan. Seriously, all she talked about was her new friend Elizabeth. I was kind of creeped out, but even my mom thought maybe it was just a crazy imagination. Then right at the month mark my daughter asks my dad if she can have a sleepover with Elizabeth. He laughs and says okay. Luckily my mom and I made it home from the store just in time to watch my 5 year old walk towards with woods with a backpack. I rush out to stop her and remind her of our rules about not going into the woods alone. She was very upset that I cancelled her sleepover. The next day I went out on the porch with her and she starts talking to thin air again. This time arguing that it wasn't her fault her mommy said no and then begging Elizabeth not to hurt me for being mean. We went inside immediately. There was a mount of logic that could change the feeling of dread that came over me. For the duration of our stay I would hear really creepy stuff coming from that side of the woods and got to the point that I avoided it entirely. I still do. Why? About a year after that the county finally decided to repave my parents road. It took much longer than expected because they had to tear the road up completely to remove old tree stumps that had never been removed and were causing the potholes. When speaking with the project manager my parents found out that the road was actually the end of the trail of tears down here on this end and that, one, that is why the stumps weren't removed, as wagons could easily go around them, two, somewhere back here was the site of an ambush that resulted in the deaths of several children and adults when they were crushed by rushing wagons. My daughter Madison told me, at around age 3, about Callum the man with brown pants and a yellow shirt that played with her. I assumed it was an imaginary friend because, well that's what kids do. Then one day, she starts singing a song I'd never heard before. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer do. I'm half crazy all for the love of Yahoo who then she'd mumble a few words and pick back up with a bicycle. Build Fort Woo I assumed she'd heard it from her babysitter as she didn't go to daycare and that's the only other person who interacted with her. So I asked the babysitter what the actual words were so I could help her sing it better. Babysitter tells me she thought my husband and I taught her the song because she didn't know it either. So I asked my daughter where she'd heard the song and she tells me Callum taught it to me. He sings it to his baby. Eventually, Callum faded away. Fast forward to about 5 years ago, I'm telling the story to a co-worker who recognized the song as an old Nat King Cole tune called Bicycle Built Fort 2. That prompted us to start looking on Ancestry.com at my property address history. I start following rabbit holes and find that in the 40s, the Beasley family owned the property adjacent to ours, which is a now defunct diary farm until it was sold in the 90s. Deeded owner at the time it was purchased in 1941, Callum Beasley. Father of five children, youngest died at age three. Her name was Madeline. This happened when I first met my wife. She had two kids before we met. They are mine. They were just born before I met them. That's what I like to say. Wife, a mutual friend and myself were hanging around her house. Just bullshitting and watching something on TV. Her youngest, let's call him Rob, started crying. So our friend, call him Steve, says why don't you try fatherhood and see what's up. Sure. Okay. Now, Rob slept with his door closed and lights off. Always was that way. Hated lights when sleeping. So I turn hall light on us to not give his eyes too much strain. When I walk into his room, the creepy ass little demon child was sitting cross-legged in the corner staring at the wall. When I opened the door he just gave me a complete dead look over his shoulder. No expression. But I wouldn't have been more creeped out if he was sitting on the ceiling. Well, not to be a little bitch. But, I slowly closed the door and walked away. Told future wife what happened. She goes in there, Judas sleeping in his fucking bed. Wasn't 10 seconds that went by after I left his room. 
My three-year-old son's room was right off the living room, and, because of a gate, he could only go between his room and the baby-proofed living room at night. Once we moved him into a toddler bed, he'd go out and play in the living room, in total darkness, sometimes. Thing is, he usually made lots of noise so, even if I couldn't see him, I knew he was there. About a month ago, I'm walking around the house turning off lights, before going to bed. It was late, around midnight. From the gate, I look into the living room to see if my son's door was closed. It wasn't, but it was dead quiet. So I figured he had just gotten up for a little and gone to bed without closing it. As I pass through the gate, I hear, from behind, hello, daddy, no inflection. I turn around, and I can't see him. I stare at the couch, which was under a window, but nothing is there. Then his head pops up, backlight by the window and he says hello daddy again. I actually jumped. Kid has great timing. <laughs> I've told this story before. My eldest was about 10, and had always been obsessed with red orange hair. Like clown carrot absurd that poor ginger tone of red hair. Since she has olive skin it would look horrendous on her, and she always got upset that I wouldn't let her dye it. She also has these really gorgeous liquid gold yellow brown eyes. Not like mine, muddy green brown, or her dad's, basically silver grey. One day she tells me about his being picked on at school, as sometimes happens, never bothered her at all, because she just think in her head, ah what do they know anyway, I was Queen Elizabeth and they're all just nobody at all. Told me this super casual, like it was the most basic and easy, to believe fact of life. I just kind of stared at her and asked, which Queen Elizabeth? She said I had red hair. Notice I had it, not she had it. So I searched up some Queen Elizabeth Google images, she points to the Kate Blanchett movie and says that one, but my eyes were brown, like they are now low and behold, she had brown eyes instead of blue as the movie portrayed, and finished it off with, that's why I always love red hair so much mom. It was so surreal for me, and so factual for her. I'd like to say I don't believe in that stuff, but dang she made me question things. Around Christmas this past year I was at work, while my wife was home with our 4 year old daughter. They were watching TV and she goes to my wife I like daddy much more than my old daddy my wife asks her what she means. She starts talking about her past mommy and daddy. She gave names of both of them, explained how she was an only child. How both of them died in the hospital of being sick. She even gave an address where they lived. When we googled it, the only hid was some place in a remote area of Europe. I asked her what the house looked like, she described it almost perfectly. When we asked her how she got to us, she said I was sick in the hospital and went to sleep. When I woke up I was under the Christmas tree at my new house. It was pretty creepy. Once in a while we try to get more information out of her, she remembers little bits and pieces here and there. The weird part was knowing an address and what the house looked like. Even the name she gave us for her other parents were both European-ish names. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. I would be so grateful if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel. New videos every day.